And we are about ready to kick off the Big Ten Championship. IU in white and Michigan in blue. My name is Daryl Knowlton and I am the head coach of Culver Military Academy, which is a high school, and this is my broadcasting debut, and with me will be the commissioner of the Big Ten D1A Conference, Mr. Marcus Harley. Can go action by Michigan. Knocked down by nine. Dale, great day for the Big Ten final here. Good weather, amazing facility here at the Moose Rugby Grounds. Uh, two really qualified teams come, coming into the final. Both teams really had to earn their way in. Indiana with an undefeated record coming in. Uh, pretty much plowed their way through conference play. Uh, Michigan uh, certainly earning the right. Um, after a very improved season last year, proving that they belong the D1A level, comes in here today. Uh, with one loss to the defending Big Ten champion, uh, Wisconsin, uh, which was quite a matchup. And uh, we'll see how these teams do today. I think it's a really good thing, Marcus. We've got a penalty right now uh, for a high tackle against Blue. Uh, having been around Big Ten rugby and for, for many years, I can say without a doubt, this is a great turnout for Big Ten rugby. Uh, know that the Midwest, especially Indiana, and some of our Ohio neighbors and Wisconsin neighbors, we turn out really good, uh, good, good quality rugby from the high school programs, and this is just another extension of what our high school kids are doing, um, and now the more formalized uh, college teams. So we got a high tackle at the five. Looks like IU is going to run a penalty play. Wynn's going to play a little bit of a, a little bit of a situation today. Uh, right now we've got the wind coming out uh, at, at Blues backs right to Isaac Hall, big number eight from Fort Wayne. Good quick ball. are you quick? Quick to clean. And it looks like, yes, signaled try IU. And it looks like number nine, scrum half from IU. Yeah, Jake Garwood, uh, second year player out of Penn High School, a perennial powerhouse at the high school level. Uh, Jake's actually a second year starter um, down in Bloomington. Uh, you can see the resolve of the Michigan defense there in the goal line situation. Very disciplined, organized team. Uh, sometimes a little hard to account for slippery number nine who uh, showed the dummy and, and slipped through for a, a short try. Just like we have, uh, unlike the NFL, we have 90 seconds in rugby to, to make the, the conversion. So right now he is on the clock. Um, and if he doesn't get the uh, kickoff by uh, the 90 second mark, then he, uh, the referee will indicate that it's no good. So we are currently, we're uh, about five minutes in and we, uh, I use seven to nothing. We're back on. That win played a factor in that kick. We're going to go back to probably scrum center. Um, 
We'll restart it. It'll be an IU feed. So we're going to get to see uh, what the what the scrums are made of in the first scrum of the day. Yeah, it looks like maybe a little bit of nerves coming into play there. Um, you know, just a standard reset. Pushed it long through the dead in the end goal area. Scrum center is a significant disadvantage, so I'll have to try to make that adjustment for the next restart. Uh, there's a stolen scrum by Michigan. Looks like they've successfully hooked the ball back. Ball's coming out, played by the eight man from Michigan. It's broken the gain line well there. See if Michigan can get on the front foot here. We have a, a penalty advantage. Um, I didn't see what the penalty was for, but the referee will play advantage until he feels that the, the non-offending team has gained either a territorial or tactical advantage. It looks like that advantage is going to be over right now. It's like Michigan State's uh, playing a fairly spread attacking pattern, um, looking to work that midfield channel between the forwards and backs. A little mishandling of the ball resulting in a kick by the Indiana number 10, Jonathan Inari. Wow, that kick was returned straight out in the full. So that would come back for an Indiana throw at the point where it was kicked. About to restart play here. We've got an Indiana put. Looks like they're opting for a six-man line out. And they fielded it cleanly. Formed a mall. Now the ball's out. Let's see what kind of attacking movements Indiana's got with the back line here. Got a pretty interesting story with the centers for IU. Um, brothers, uh, freshman and sophomore combination. In out of Cathedral, right? Out of Cathedral High School, another perennial powerhouse. Uh, um, 2013 number two in the country, uh, 2012 actually won the national championship, USA Rugby National Championship for the high school, single school. Each team right now, I think is just trying to find their, find their pace, some unforced errors. Yeah, but that center combo, Bryce and Jacob Campbell, we'll see what kind of production they have on the day. Very sure-handed fullback from IU, Matt Duncan is a North Central High School product in his second year out of Bloomington. Seemed to be pretty competent and confident with the ball in hand under the high ball. Very effective counterattack, and now IU is churning away the ball in hand attacking in the Michigan half. It's like there may be a turnover opportunity. There's a competition in that breakdown. And a mishandle by Jake, Jake Campbell, the inside center for IU. A little sloppy play there, a little few Ball handling errors, you've got to wonder if nerves are still a factor this early in the game. As we've mentioned and was reported pretty pretty accurately in Rugby Magazine, uh, stage has been set for these two teams. They haven't met since last year where Michigan really rose to the occasion and upset Indiana in Bloomington. And uh, this is the first time these teams will have their rematch. Still looks like some of the scrums are trying to adjust to the new scrum cadence that we had this year. Gonna go run with the mall here. A little rolling mall. It's 
looks like another turnover ball opportunity nope. from Yep, turnover ball opportunity for Michigan. Mishandled by Blue. Kind of knock advantage. Oh. Turned into a penalty advantage. It looks like Quick he's Quick tap. And there's that center combo that you talked about. Moving the ball. I was going to look to reset their, their platform. Some posts and picks. Real. Again, you see a very disciplined Michigan defense here. Isaac Hall. Uh, nominated, right? Big eight man for, for IU. Uh, very athletic, probably the most athletic uh, forward on the field um, and has gotten the nod from his peers as an all Big Ten first team nominee. Got another penalty. And this is the second penalty against Michigan inside what, what uh, football, football would understand it to be the red zone. So he's going to have a little talk to with, uh, with number six. So we'll see what IU does here right now, whether it's going to be a, a tap, a wall, um, or they're going to go for points. Ball's tapped out to the sophomore Ben Dahl. And try. Now I've got to I got to pull a little homer on that right there. That's my boy Connor Casey, uh, four year four year player for me and uh, uh, captain and all state. Uh, and this is his final year at IU. Connor's very high IQ rugby player, uh, and that time looks like he was Johnny on the spot. So we're back on. Um, Kick was no good, so we are. Uh, it's going to be 12, 12 to zero. You get five points for a try, two points for a conversion. IU's going to look to try to move it out. Uh, penalty against IU. Blue's going to looking to get it out. Looks like Michigan's lining up uh, the wide attacking pattern and looks to have numbers out wide if they can get the ball away from the breakdown. So far in this match, it looks like uh, IU's strong, strong suit is, is near the forwards. So we have a Michigan try has been awarded to Michigan. 12 to 5. So it's currently 12 to 12 to 7. Number 10, uh, Joel Konzelman, Konzelman from Michigan converting that try with the win. That's that's got to be uh, no no easy task there. Konzelman is another uh, All Big Ten nominee, the leader for his team. So I know his team will be looking for some good production uh, in the kicking game from their fly half. Seven for IU, making a, a solid stop there on a, what looked like a pretty potent Michigan attack. Uh, Sam Zivit, the number seven from IU. It's actually an import. Uh, Sam is, is from the Toronto, Ontario area. 
Looks like we've got a kick that went on, went out in the full there, but uh, Michigan kicker was in fact behind the 22. And they'll have a line out just inside, an Indiana line out just inside the Michigan half. Michigan not committing a lot of guys to the ruck or the contact point so they can fan out and reestablish their, their defense. Um, There's the, uh, the crafty outside center. And where's number 11 from? Number 11 is actually a Carmel product, another Indiana high schooler. Um, that's Scott Denke. He's a senior. That play was initially broken up, uh, broken open by Bryce Campbell with a, a shifty step. It's like the uh, Indiana fly half was under a bit of pressure there, but has been an awarded uh, penalty. Let's see if that helps them out a little bit here. IU had the penalty. They went elected for the kick. Uh, it went straight out, which means uh, it's a 22 uh, for Michigan. Uh, Got to be able to, to put that ball out. Looked like Michigan captain Kendi Anditan. I uh, was having a word with his boys, see if he can get them to collect themselves and maintain their defensive discipline and, and try to get some more turnovers here. They need to get the ball in hand. Seems like Indiana has had a significant time of possession so far, putting that Michigan defense to the test. Little kick, it's going to hang up. Called for a knock. So we had a, an IU injury, uh, we'll call it blood sub. Um, so that uh, player will be uh, taken off. Uh, we'll have medical take a look at him, fix him up, and uh, he'll be back out as soon as uh, we get the, uh, the blood fixed. Looks, yeah, that was, uh, that was their inside center for IU, uh, Jacob Campbell. Um, he's had a pretty productive outing today. Looks like he was replaced um, in the lineup. I think they brought on a new winger. Better scrum by IU that time. We're able to solidify the ball. Um, IU's got to find some rhythm. I think they're, they're missing that right now. Um, but Michigan is being really solid and disciplined in their defense, uh, giving them all they can take at the, uh, the pick and goes. So uh, a little inside crash. Yeah, IU seems to be pr pretty productive here in the midfield. We'll see what kind of pattern uh, they implement here in terms of using the width of the field. Um, they've got numbers and spacing. Uh, we're not seeing the ball make it out past the midfield. So we'll see what kind of opportunities they can create as we go forward. Maybe create some easy scoring opportunities. And just on cue, as the ball goes wide, we had another mishandle. Uh, by the new outside center, Scott Danke, it's being returned <laughs> very aggressively uh, by the Michigan winger, who's just taken out of bounds uh, down near the, the five meter line. Um, just a few steps shy of a, of a Michigan score there. Michigan's demonstrating that they can turn the field. Um, 
get that ball out wide and and really work. Look, that that was a, a freshman from Michigan, Matt Caston, uh, with that return. Looks like he's definitely got some wheels on the wing. Uh, so if Michigan can get the ball in hand, we'll see if they're able to execute a, a wide attacking pattern to get the ball in his hands. He, he showed some speed there. Oh, and there's a turnover by Michigan. Just pick the ball and are, are right back on the front foot deep into Indiana territory. And there's a try. Looked like that was a lock for Michigan. Number five, Drew Vecchio, uh, San Diego product. Uh, looks like as we look down the Michigan uh, roster, they're, they're a pretty, pretty diverse group from all over. So right now the score, uh, I believe, is 12-12. Uh, and Joel's back up to kick. Um, they're going to try to hold it again because of the wind. IU on that last possession, they turned it over inside their 22, uh, and which is really what set the platform for, for Michigan to, to go ahead with that score. It looks like we've got our the sub coming back on. Looks like he's gotten stitched up. And we are 14-12, uh, University of Michigan. Um, Looks like Jake Campbell's returning from his blood sub. So we'll make the uh, adjustments to their lineup and get back at it. I use really got to set the tone here. They got to come back and answer this Michigan score. It was a deep restart by Jonathan Inari. Uh, turnover here would be, be key. That that re definitely regain, change the momentum. But uh, Michigan pretty solid with the ball in hand, playing a little slow ball, keeping it close to the breakdown area. Um, they're set up for a wide attacking pattern. We'll see what they do if the ball comes out to the back line. They're not kicking. They're running it out. See if they can keep the ball moving here. Fullback from Michigan able to maintain possession through the contact point. Big head. Going to reset for a scrum. Looks like a forward pass or a knock on. I didn't see what the indication was. Let's see if IU can actually work it through the hands, get a nice set piece play, and, and really test this back line uh, for Michigan. Got a little winger full that filling in there. IU's got numbers coming strong. We'll see if the Michigan defense responds. There's an effective counter attack by the Michigan eight man. It looks like he's being dinged for offsides. This is the, the fourth penalty by Blue, so uh, they're, they are uh, really testing IU here. Uh, looks like they're going to run a, a penalty play. They're going to want quick ball out of this. Yep, we're going to go more pick and go, slow the ball down, set the platform. Loose head prop for IU is, uh, from what I understand, is, is pretty much brand new. Uh, but due to some injury, um, is uh, getting the call. Big turnover for the Wolverines there. IU took the ball into the contact, wasn't able to, to make productive use of the ball. And uh, referee Kurt Weeder um, calls turnover ball. We'll have a scrum down Michigan's put.
big push by White. Knocked down by IU, number nine, selling out. Now this will be a uh, 22 to Michigan. Big scrum by IU. And he's got to drop kick it out. So the ball's got to touch the ground first. Big kick down the center of the field. Let's see what IU can do as far as uh, counterattack. That ball's fielded by winger Antonio Wynn, who's uh, definitely got some wheels for the IU back line. One of their fastest players. Um, he's also one of their most productive. He's on the, the Big Ten points leading uh, scoreboard for the conference play season. Ca effective counterattack gets uh, IU back into Michigan territory, but uh, a turnover ultimately put the ball back into the Wolverines' hands. We're at midway point, IU. Michigan really strong at the contact point. Again, they're conceding the ruck. One or two guys really forcing IU to, to put it through the hands. Little stab through. Like Michigan's got numbers wide if they can move the ball through the hands. Uh, they've got it out. IU responds. Looks like Michigan's in the touch, so we'll have IU throw in uh, just about the 50 yard line, 50 meter line. Maybe a little miscommunication in the back line with IU as far as what play they were going to run. Forward's going to come through, reset, establish the, the platform. Isaac Hall again, workhorse all day. If they got it, they can use the numbers. Here we go. Looks like a referee Kurt Weeders playing advantage for a mishandle there. Unfortunate, they were uh, just inches away from breaking that, but Michigan again showing discipline in, in defense, able to bring down the IU player and ultimately force the knock on. Very untidy scrum. And go for the kick. Be IU ball. Michigan contests. We got an over under play. One of the Graham boys, number six. Are you not able to really gain anything from the set piece there? Uh, another line out, pretty conventional front jumper. Obviously, Ben has got the height advantage, and the execution's there. We're just not seeing any production off the set piece so far. Um, IU has been the dominant team in the, in the scrum. 
Uh, so no disadvantage there. See what Michigan does with the ball in hand here, attacking from just inside their own half. So we had a, a, an obstruction or pushing penalty. Um, Isaac Hall took the man off the ball. Uh, looks like Michigan's gonna have a, a kick, kick at the posts. Um, Marcus, as a, as a coach, as I am, one of the things I think we're seeing is we just can't establish continuity um, on either, either side of the ball for, for IU or Michigan. I don't know, again, if that's all these kids, whether they're from Michigan or IU, they've all played in big games. So I, I don't know if it's just the day or um, any thoughts on that? Hey, you know, I think the stage is, it was set. Um, two tough teams worked their way through tough competition of conference play. And, uh, you know, everything's on the line. Both teams won it. Um, IU was, I, I know, disappointed uh, last year to not finish at the top of the Big Ten. And Michigan has called and scrapped their way um, all the way to the, t you know, to being a competitive team at D1A, and, and they're here to win this game also. So uh, I think we're, we're seeing some decent uh, patterns installed, and, and maybe the teams are still just getting settled. Um, you know, it, you, as you pointed out, Daryl, uh, Michigan's, you can see them probing at the breakdown for the counter. And, um, but so far, nobody's, n not a significant amount of turnovers. Um, but just waiting to see if they can click in a, in a you know, in a, like you said, with some continuity in, a, in their attacking pattern. So with that kick, I believe we've got uh, 17 to, to 12, Michigan. That was a big kick. Um, big kick. Big kick by the Michigan fly half. Clears it about uh, nearly 70 meters there, all the way down into the Indiana half. Let's see what their counterattack looks like. Duncan again, sure with the ball in hand, and makes a great tackle. Great tackle down to the Michigan 22. Michigan's under pressure. We'll see how they respond. Bobbled ball. Fantastic kick by Michigan. 15, the fullback, I believe, that made that kick. Now, IU can capitalize right now if they just keep going left. There's Antonio Wynn with those long legs, another effective counterattack. Bryce Campbell, the outside center, handles the ball well in, in contact, offloads the fullback, Matt Duncan. Under pressure, Michigan gives for another IU try. Kick's gonna, no good. So if I'm doing my math right, I think it's uh, it's 17 all. Michigan on the restart, 17 points. This type of game, uh, at least the kids are moving the ball. 17 points, first half. Uh, Shows good rugby. Again, he tries for the kick. Not much coming out of it. 50-50 at the breakdown. Looks like Michigan was a little late to that breakdown, but uh, was able to maintain possession. Under a little bit of pressure here, and IU's got numbers to the breakdown, but Michigan showing solid technique and able to retain possession of the ball. Here we go, we've got an attacking pattern from Michigan on. Nothing doing with the big stop by the eight-man um, for IU, I call. Joel Konzelman for Michigan uh, with the kick. Looks like turnover ball, but that's going to be danged by 
The referee sees that the IU defender was not releasing the ball carrier, making the ball unplayable, resulting in a penalty. Number seven for Michigan with a huge run, twisting and twirling his way down the sideline, was in support with the offload. Sequoia Burt Combs, he's the, he's the Michigan player to watch of the game, and, uh, and so far it's not disappointing with the go-ahead try. So with the try, it's 17-22, University of Michigan. And we're going to keep that score 17-22. The thing we're seeing is Michigan is really taking advantage of the IU um, mishandles and, and where they're getting the penalties at. Um, you know, IU's marching down and, and, and putting together some platforms. Michigan is just really taking advantage of the corner and taking advantage of the, of the counterattack really well. Koya Burke with the take there, number seven for Michigan. Um, looks like the Michigan Ford setting a new platform. We'll see if they continue to run the ball out or they use the win to their advantage. It looks like uh, right on cue, they kick it deep in IU territory. Looks like the halo rule was uh, applied there. Uh, referee Kurt Weeder indicating that the IU defense off the kick uh, violated the, the 10 meter halo rule from the, the fielder of the ball, uh, electing to award the penalty to Michigan at about the, looks like the 38 meter line inside the IU half. And he's going to slot it. So now we've got uh, 25 to uh, 17, Michigan. Uh, end of the first half, uh, Michigan 20, 25, Marcus? 25, IU 17. Uh, we'll see what kind of subs they bring back, and uh, we're going to really see what IU can do with the wind in the second half. The winds will be at their backs. It's going to be the start of the second half. I'm looking at the, the numbers for IU, and Michigan doesn't look like we really have any, any substitutions. Um, Michigan's going to kick off with us to start the second half as the, the head coach of Wisconsin. Marcus, you want to introduce him? Yeah, head coach of Wisconsin, actually uh, first year head coach, I believe, uh, taking over for longtime head coach Skip Heffernan. We've got Adam Kuhn in the booth with us. Welcome, Adam. Happy to be here, guys. Adam, what would you think, uh, I mean, did you play in the Big Ten? Yeah, I played I played for four years at, uh, at Madison for Skip from 2002 to 06. And, you know, what do you think of being the first year head coach uh, and the, and what you've been able to, to see with the Big Ten this year? Well, I think it's pretty cool that we've got a Big Ten conference, and uh, uh, I think we're just – the level of play, I think, from when I was playing in college to uh, being a coach now has improved uh, very dramatically. So it's cool that, um, that our guys are able to play at this level. Adam, uh, I know you guys were the, the defending 
uh, Big Ten champions. Uh, what, what are your thoughts right now, uh, you guys coming out of the third, fourth place match? Um, what are your thoughts for, for next season after this weekend's experience? Uh, what uh, We talked to the guys briefly after, after this game against Ohio State, and um, the one thing I said was that I was just very, very excited to see where this program goes in the next couple of years. We had five, five freshmen starting today, uh, and we brought a bunch of young guys off the bench, and um, it's just been really cool. We had a great group of freshmen come in, and they, they all play great rugby, and they're really starting to get some confidence and, and working together. It's going to be fun to see them play together over the next couple of years. Now we've got most of uh, from Wisconsin. What uh, what high school teams are you drawing from up in Wisconsin? Uh, we're uh, coming from all over the place, really. We've got a couple of guys from out of the state. Uh, we had a, a good group of guys coming from uh, the Milwaukee area. A few guys from Whitefish Bay. Um, a couple of guys from Chicago as well. Uh, so some Wisconsin guys uh, and some guys out of state. We had a really, really good freshman uh, come in from Pennsylvania named Kyle Pedraza. He's playing flanker for us today. Um, yeah, it's been it's been pretty cool. They're they're coming from all over. Looks like we had a pretty potent attack on for Michigan. There uh, went nowhere. Solid IU defense out in the open field. Had numbers at the breakdown and actually looked like they had a really aggressive counterattack on. Uh, right now we're looking at a stoppage of time here uh, for an injury. We'll see how this plays out. So we had a, a, an injury or what we call in rugby a minute. So it uh, looks like uh, no substitutions. It'll be an IU put at the 22. Great opportunity for, uh, for IU to uh, really test the, uh, the defensive back line of, uh, of Michigan. Oh, that's a tried and true chop three for IU. <laughs> that play has been on the books for IU for a number of years now. Uh, I guess we can see why. Matt Duncan's having a great day today, the sophomore out of North Central High School, uh, putting it, dotting it down between the posts there. We're going to get confirmation on the score here soon, but we believe in it's 25-24 uh, Michigan. IU coming back, slotted the uh, conversion, shorter kick, fielded well, and the boot. Not fielded, IU pouring through. We we'll see what they can do with this. Graham, pen product. Number four coming back in. Uh, we've got playing on the ground, it looks like, by Indiana after what looked like a promising probe into the midfield. Uh, decent tackle by the Michigan open fielder. And um, just a mental error there by the IU flanker playing the ball on the ground. Penalty kick fails to find touch. We've got IU possession just uh, near midfield. And that's the, that's the thing that you, you have to look at um, is – you have good athletes, but there's a big difference between good athletes and good athletes that eventually find their way to the rugby field. Um, number three uh, for I, uh, number one for IU is a uh, is a new newcomer to rugby, but a good athlete. But again, that's just a, a, a more inexperienced uh, inexperienced penalty right there. Uh, Michigan will throw the ball in on a short line out. A little confusion there in the Michigan set piece, but they're certainly trying to address and sort out. I think the the height differential there in the uh, the line out, Big Ben Dahl imposing significant present presence, but uh, Michigan collected it well, and then uh, it's like a net net loss there as they turn the ball over in open field. Big scrum by IU now. 
Free kick on the feed. So just a free kick at this time. He'll tap it. That fullback's filling in on from Michigan. Oh, there's another potent attack. Looking to see that Michigan inside center Christian Metzner. Uh, see if he can make a break. Looks like a good solid backline player. Uh, Move the ball where that that well that time. So we can get back in support and get some go forward for Michigan. A little bit of dynamic running by the uh, Michigan standout, Sequoia Burt Combs. Uh, looks like Michigan's back on the front foot, attacking with numbers uh, just inside the IU 22. Like an arm tackle by IU fly half, Jonathan Inari. Oh, but they're bailed out. There's a penalty diving over by Michigan. Gonna really see where his boot's at now. Uh, they're gonna try and slot that thing pretty far down the field. Doesn't find touch. Does find touch. Fantastic kick, one of the better ones we've seen for the day. So we, uh, Michigan uh, had a collapsing the scrum, pull down. Uh, IU found touch right around around the uh, around the 10 meter line. Big important, big important line out. Uh, Jacob Schubert from uh, Culver Military Academy on the throw. They gather it up and it looks like they're going to go for a drive, which I think is the right call. Ball's dirty. Graham. How you're really needing to capitalize on this possession and territory. They are set up on either side. We have a knock on in goal. So it'll be a blue scrum. That's gotta be a big letdown. It was a nice uh, multiple phase drive there for IU. Uh, unable to convert for points. Adam, I wanted to ask you another question. As uh, we gear up, it looks like there's a new, we've got a new structure. Uh, for the Big Ten competition, fall 15, spring 7s, an effort to address the seasonality question a lot of teams face. Um, Wisconsin represented the Big Ten and uh, represented in, in great fashion out of the CRCs last year. Um, after today, um, things will be focused on 7s. Uh, how do you guys feel about the change and, and what's your outlook for um, focusing on 7s in the spring and how do you think that will impact your, your uh, level of play at CRCs this year? I think as far as the change goes, we're pretty, we've been pretty flexible. We are pretty flexible. So uh, I think the guys are just excited to play rugby. I think over the past three years, we've really started to build that sevens program and, um, and guys are enjoying to play it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how spring goes. We lost a, a, a lot of our guys that have been a, a big part of that sevens program to graduation. Um, but, but we're ready to play, I think. Uh, we're excited for the opportunity to get to uh, the CRC again if, if we do well in the Big Ten Sevens uh, qualifiers and in the tournament. And we'll see how it goes. So we're about uh, 12 and a half minutes in and a nicked ball by Blue. 
Uh, Michigan stole that line out. And they're going to look to run it out. Inside the 22, they're typically going to want to kick. So we had an injury timeout, or again, what we call in rugby a minute. Uh, Isaac Hall out of Fort Wayne was down. Um, but looks like he's going to gut it out, and we're going to have an IU put at the five. Nice, clean feed. Eight-man pick to Isaac. Ball's presentable. I use about the, the fifth or sixth possession. And I should dot it down. He got it. So, we got 25-24, uh, you had five. We got 29-25, uh, IU. Uh, kick's gonna be a really difficult kick coming off uh, from where you put it down is where you have to kick from. So he'll have to get out really far away from the, the post to get a good angle on it. So looks like this is pan out to be a pretty good test here. Uh, Adam, being the coach of Wisconsin, you've played both of these teams in, con in Big Ten Conference play. Um, how do you think things are shaking out? Is this what you expected? I think we were expecting a pretty competitive game. I, I mean, I think what I like about what Michigan has done so far, especially in that first half, was really bringing it defensively. When we played IU, um, their forward just wore us down. They maintained possession really well, and they just drove and drove and drove off the base of the rock. Uh, and, and I think we got worn down defensively, but Michigan's really, really bringing it defensively, and I think that's why they're in this game. It's been a good one. So what we've got now is we've got a scrum, uh, which was caused by IU kicking it out the back of the try zone. Uh, again, kind of an unforced error, um, big push. There's that Michigan center uh, getting some action, but uh, not much of a net gain there as he was met by solid IU midfield defense. Still playing, I think he's still playing a penalty advantage. IU needs to maintain their discipline and really not really cause any, any unforced errors. Uh, number 10 looks like for IU is down. He's going to go back for the penalty. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. 12 white off his feet at the point of contact. So with that penalty at IU uh, was 20... 29-25, uh, it is now a one-point game, 28-29 IU. Looks like we are bringing on some subs right now. Yeah, fresh legs for the IU um, front guys, their forwards, uh, number 22 uh, coming on the field. It's a big guy, big presence. Um, I think he's been a starter for IU in the past. Should be a nice uh, impact player for them. And talking with the IU coaches, uh, he was the was the starter. Uh, ended up uh, having a, a, a nick, and uh, just hasn't found his way uh, his legs yet. But uh, bringing him in off the bench is a it's a pretty big upgrade when you can go from to another starter. So looks like Blues bringing in some substitutions now. We're about uh, halfway through the second half, so we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit more of the subs. Speaking of unforced errors there, Michigan standout, Sequoia Burke Combs muffs the kick straight off the chest. Uh, really unfortunate. IU's going to have possession uh, deep into Michigan territory here. Again, it's a one-point game. 
29 to 28. Indiana's up front. IU's closed down, their backs have closed down the ranks a little bit, maybe because of the wind. Um, or to use that really good at Michigan attack as, uh, against them, but they, they stop it right at the 22. Number 19 off the bench with his first carry, sets the platform. And they gotta try to get this mall down so that they don't lose possession, and they do. Hopefully the ball can get produced. We've got a penalty, and he's gonna quick tap. Ayer really needs to take advantage of this possession. And he has signaled a try. <laughs> we're gonna have to do some math here there, Marcus, because uh, we're, we're, we're starting to get up there. Yeah, the go-ahead uh, try is gonna put Indiana ahead now, uh, going up from the one-point lead. Uh, we'll have a 34-28 lead uh, for Indiana. And, and speaking of that impact, you see uh, uh, the big substitute 22. Looking down the roster sheet for Indiana. Slots the kick. Uh, so we're going to be at uh, 36 20, 36-28. Ball's going to hang out. Nice collection. We're gonna see a kick. Let's just hope it sits up, and it does. Michigan, quick to organize, and there's their speedster. We're gonna play the forward, forward pass by Michigan. So uh, I use scrum at the 40 on a forward pass by Michigan. We got dirty scrum. They're gonna go ahead and call it. Forwards are slow to get there for IU right now, but working hard. Very impressed with Michigan's ability to just continue to their, their discipline um, against the back line for IU that's really, there's been a big point differential within the standings from what I'm, what, from what I'm understood from the standings, Marcus. Yeah, that's right. We've got a productive group at IU, uh, loose and fast, uh, generally keep the ball off the deck and keep it moving. We've got some pretty uh, dynamic uh, runners and, and some blazing speed. So I haven't seen a lot of them today, and, and I think most of that, as you said, Daryl, is uh, due to a discipline defense from uh, the Michigan side of the ball. On that penalty, Michigan elected to, to quick tap, and that's not a, a bad option considering the wind. Um, but it looks like IU has nicked the ball, and no. It's come through, IU's picked it over. We'll play the original knock by blue, scrum to white. It's like we're gonna flood right. Good, excellent kick by IU. 
well covered by by blue. We're gonna have about uh, 14 to maybe 18 minutes left, depending on uh, the stoppage time for the referee. So. Um, Big line out for, for, for Michigan. They really need to solidify this line out. Again, Michigan effectively addressing the concern with that tall first jumper from IU. And uh, good tactical execution there from uh, Michigan. Now they're coming out attacking effectively from that set piece, moving the ball from sideline to sideline. Um, obviously under significant disadvantage um, after pretty tactical advantageous play from IU coming the weak side off that last scrum, pinning Michigan deep in their own half. Oh, and we've got a turnover. It's like I call was able to get an effective counter ruck there, turn the ball over, see, uh, see what the net gain is here. IU ball moves it through. That's a, really the first clean backline play we've been able to see off the off the the loose. They had the one off the set piece, which you say it was a, 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 a three call on the on the first backline play off the set piece. That was really good loose play backline play, uh, well constructed uh, by IU. Yeah, that, that last set piece uh, backline movement, just an insertion of the fullback, caught the the defense out of position. Uh, for some easy points. Okay. So we're about, I think we're 41-28 right now. Uh, right now Michigan is, is under the pressure. They've got to answer the IU. Um, And I think I use right just to put it through the hands and try to establish a platform. A little solid play from the IU back three here. Uh, Antonio Wynn, Matt Duncan, and Scott Danke with very effective counterattacks, uh, basically nullifying the nullifying the challenge from the, the Michigan kicking game today. We got penalty advantage right now. The referee is indicating penalty advantage, so we'll see what IU does with this. No indication by the referee whether or not penalty advantage is still on. He's going to play the advantage. Be interesting to see what uh, IU does right now. Um, IU needs to uh, kind of take care of the clock a little bit. And we've got about 10 minutes left, maybe, of the game. Um, so let's see what uh, decision of IU is. So the fly half for IU is going to take a, a shot at goal. Lofts it up, slots it down. So we've got uh, 44 to 28. The unofficial score. Michigan on the restart, it's going to hang up. You got Big Daddy in the red there, coach for IU, uh, really pushing his guys to continue the pace. Ball doesn't get moved through the hands very well there by the IU back line. Looks like they're going to come back. Uh, wasted opportunity there. It looked like they had numbers in the overload. Turnover ball, knock on Michigan's uh, scrum. It'd be a blue scrum. Let's 
called a whip wheel for uh, that's what the penalty was. Uh, are you getting dinged for intentionally wheeling the scrum? Um, I don't know if it was a wheel or just uh, kind of overpowered them, but really Michigan really looking to knock on the door of IU, fighting hard. Now IU really needs to maintain their discipline. No reason to get uh, an unnecessary penalty. And there's the contribution from the inside center we were looking for from Michigan. Uh, solid player there in Christian Mincer. He's able to make a good contribution to help his team out today with a five point try there. So we're back and uh, looks like conversion was good. So we've got uh, 44, 35. We believe um, big guy call has uh, been substituted. We're gonna see what they can do. They come back again with the number, the center. It's a mall. After the uh, last few possessions, the game was starting to get opened up, but Michigan um, getting back on the front foot, making a game of it here. Counter-attack, oh, counter-rug. So we've got a penalty. And now he's going to quick tap. And I really do believe that was a good call. And again, there's that substitution. Anytime you can bring a guy like that off the bench, uh, you're a deep team. It's a nice kick. Michigan is going to stick with the run. Well, we've seen that all day. Michigan not afraid to keep the ball in hand deep in their own area. Uh, takes a lot of guts, but um, so far has been a, a successful strategy for them. This time, however, uh, looks like they were late to the breakdown. Going to have a penalty uh, I, to IU's favor right around the Michigan 22. Judging by the, the watch, we've got about uh, anywhere from uh, three to five minutes. IU's going to take their time and uh, for the line out. So IU on the line out, took it down. Pushing forward, it's about to the back line. Skip. And we've got a knock. So it'll be a blue put. It's been nice as a, as a high school coach, it's been nice to see uh, Michigan really uh, organize their program and uh, um, really represent well. They got a lot of really good high school Michigan teams. Um, it's against the head. Athletic, very athletic flanker there and Tyler Graham uh, was able to convert off the set piece pretty much single-handedly taking the ball in for another five-pointer. Got the conversion. Michigan's gonna really pressure, um, but we've got uh, 50, 51, 35 right now. Um, judging by the watch, we're we're almost probably full time. Um, very good breakdown. Uh, set the set the platform. Big kick.
speaking of the tactical advantage, uh, the substitutions there. Michigan going with the backup in their back three and unable to cleanly handle that ball. Puts his team at a little bit of a disadvantage. Ah, he's got it. And that's Tyler Graham. Tyler Graham? Tyler Graham again uh, for the five under the post and center. Looking at the watch. Uh, Graham's a, a homegrown kid here at Penn. This is his field. Uh, but this should pretty much do it. I wouldn't be surprised if the referee blows it full time. Um, if not, we've got a couple minutes left. Big hit, but collected. Um, the kick again. Chance for redemption and the backup winger uh, proves very solid and, and is on the counterattack. He's got to be feel good about making a uh, little redemption for that last mishandle. Great counterattack by the backup winger. Michigan with some north and south ball there, trying to set a new platform. No giving up. Quick tap through the hands. There's Christian Minsler again, making his contribution. Presence fell out on the field. Looks like we're coming back for an offsides penalty. Michigan will maintain possession. Do we have a, looks like. That's it right there. We've got IU with that last push by Michigan. Um, IU is successful. It is uh, final. Final score is going to be 51, 40, 51, 40. Um, we'll have the announcements here soon, trophy presentation and uh, announcements of MVP. Obviously a big congratulations to IU, hard fought game and uh, Michigan bringing it, representing the Big Ten well. Couldn't be more pleased for the, the turnout here today and a, and a great competition representing Big Ten rugby. Uh, hats off to the champion. And uh, Daryl, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks for being the commissioner of Big Ten rugby. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next year.